What is particle physics? Well, particle physics is the study of subatomic particles, but let's put a different twist on it and say it's the study of the universe and the things that inhabit it by studying its smallest components, which are subatomic particles. But if we can't see these particles, why should we care? And the answer is because we can see this. Gas prices, electric bills, food prices, going up. And what do they have in common? It's energy for our homes, for our cars, for our devices, even for us. All right, so why does that matter? What's the relation to particle physics? Because particles are energy. And if you understand energy at the most fundamental level, you know, what ties gas or electricity or, or even food together to be energy, it enables us with the science to solve the next energy crisis. That's why. Okay, so what are these subatomic particles? Well, there's been hundreds that have been discovered, but it really boils down to 17 elementary particles that are grouped together in what's called the standard model. And the standard model is often referred to as the most successful theory to date. In fact, it's so successful, we can predict the next news article. And I can already tell you what it's going to say. It'll say John Doe discovers a new particle, and oh, guess what? He's a candidate for a Nobel Prize. And the particle was predicted by the standard model long ago, which is why it's so successful. And physicists are so disappointed that they have not been able to break the standard model. Really, I don't think they're that disappointed because they'll continue to get funding. Why? It's successful, yet there are known issues that the standard model cannot explain things like gravity or dark matter or dark energy. So these projects continue to get funded until we have these answers. But there are also issues with the standard model that it wasn't able to predict. And this is important because it had to be corrected over time. Things such as the neutrino, the smallest particle that has mass. It wasn't originally predicted to have mass. And not only does it have mass, it strangely becomes two larger types of neutrinos. How does that happen? But there are issues that are also ignored, right? The standard model is supposed to be a table of elementary particles, right? Neutrinos and electrons and quarks, for example. All right, so if these are truly elementary, then answer this. Why, during collisions of electrons, which are supposed to be elementary, quarks are produced? Why is that important? Because a quark is supposed to be an elementary particle. It was just produced. And collide electrons and positrons and neutrinos can be produced. Right? That's peculiar because an electron is supposed to be elementary. All right, a neutron is supposed to be made of three quarks. Again, that's supposed to be elementary, but it decays to an electron and an antineutrino. Or a proton, also made of three quarks, decays to an anti-electron called a positron and a neutrino. Really, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that, you know, a quark is probably not an elementary particle, and strangely, an electron might not be either. But we believe in the 17 elementary particle model because of an equation that looks like this. This is what the standard model is. And there's actually few people that know and understand an equation like this. It's incredibly complex. But more importantly, as you get kind of deep into that math, that results in strange explanations about the universe, because this is what the average person wants to know. What's the world that we're living in? And we end up with explanations like this as a result of that math. Oh, there's 11 dimensions, or gravity's weak because it escapes to a parallel universe, or a particle can be anywhere and everywhere until the point that it's measured. Well, the problem with these explanations is that there's really no way to, to prove it. I mean, how are you going to prove a parallel universe? So we get stuck with these answers that people don't understand the math, we just have to believe them. And I don't think that's the case. I think understanding the subatomic world is incredibly important for our future, but we should strive for answers, simple answers. The math should be simple. Right? Einstein's energy equation was simple. Planck's energy equation for photons was simple. This is simple. That's a wave equation uh, for energy. Let's face it, the standard model is not simple. Look at that math. But more importantly for all of us, the explanation should be simple. All right, three dimensions that we can see and test. Uh, one fundamental or elementary particle. We saw it before. 
with atomic elements is get down to one proton for hydrogen creates all the other elements. It's that's part of nature and a principal cause of motion. And this is not right. 10 spatial dimensions that we can't test 17 elementary particles, different reasons for forces is not simple. And so the What Is series of videos is really an attempt to explain aspects of our universe in simpler terms. Because the universe really is simple, it's man that has made it complex.